One more game. A dangerous phrase, especially when it's late at night and you've got work in the morning. But come on, it's Valorant. How long can it really take to play one more game? When did it get to 3am? In Valorant, you're never too far away from a record-breakingly long game. Overtime means games can go on, in theory, forever. These are the games that push the pros, the fans and Riot's lobbies to breaking point. Like, I understand guys, you're pros, you want to keep things professional, but I'm going to be eating breakfast in the shower if this carries on. Despite being a relatively young esport, Valorant teams have been keeping fans up into the early hours all across the world pretty much since launch. It was India's Velocity Gaming and God Squad that gave us our first taste of a game so long you could forget what your family looks like when they played out a 40 round marathon on Haven during a Challengers upper bracket final no less. Pressure's one thing, but pressure and sleep deprivation? Well, that's that's just daily life. Velocity finally put us all out of our misery when at last they managed to string two maps together, winning 21 to 19. That was back in September 2020 when the Valorant Champions Tour was still a glint in Riot's eye. But once the VCT propelled Future Earth's esports scene into the stratosphere, it didn't take long before the record started to fall. TSM and Gen G were the next set of teams to test the breaking point of Valorant's lobbies when they clashed in a Stage 3 Challengers match with a spot at the European playoffs on the line and TSM one loss away from elimination. Map 1 started ordinarily enough, Gen G delivering a routine 13 10 victory on Bind. So far, so textbook. But TSM had no intention of going quietly, and Gen G weren't about to step aside to keep them in the tournament. So when they arrived on split, the game quickly descended into the nail biteiest of nail biters. Only six rounds total went to the attackers, thanks Split. And with 26 rounds played, we were right back where we started with both teams deadlocked at 13 all. What followed was a testament to the stamina of both the teams and their fans, as the second map saw a stupid 44 rounds played back to back before a winner could be found, breaking even Riot, who had to set up another lobby for the match to continue in case it crashed. Thankfully, it went without a hitch. TSM managing to rise above the 90 minute slugfest and secure the game 23 rounds to 21. An actual full game of professional football or a high octane Valorant match? You decide. And it turned out to be pretty important as the players and everyone else quickly realised that my god the game isn't even over yet and a map 3 would be required. Thankfully Icebox cooled off the competition and TSM advanced with a mercifully normal 13-10 win. That wasn't even the only record to fall in that match. Unsurprisingly, the kill record for a single map was blown to pieces, Gen G's nature, taking the consolation prize of being Apex Predator, bagging nearly half a century of frags on split alone. Does that make up for losing a map that lasted over an hour and a half? Probably not, but records are always nice, aren't they? Not that Gen G and TSM got to actually hold on to theirs for very long. The longest pro Valorant match record was smashed just a few weeks later when Fours and FPX decided that 44 rounds simply wasn't enough Valorant and took matters into their own hands. Battling it out for a spot in the latter stages of the EMEA Stage 3 playoffs, the two European sides played out arguably the best single map of Valorant in the VCT's opening year. Impressive not just for the sheer, exhausting length of the game, but for the plays and clutches that kept Bind swinging back and forth throughout. When all was finally said and done, Fours and FPX had slogged through a frankly ridiculous 46 rounds of Valorant, meaning the entire three map match took three hours and 40 minutes to run. You could fly from Berlin to Madrid in that time, and the game still wouldn't have finished by the time you landed. FPX's Shao ended the centuries long map with 43 kills to his name, snagging an impressive 36% headshot percentage to boot. But even that wasn't enough. Fours took bind before dominating map three to take the win comfortably in the end and put the series and every one of Europe's Valorant fans to bed. And FPX didn't even break the kill record. Brutal. If you can believe it though, that's not even the longest Valorant game ever. Back at the end of 2020, Riot revealed that two lucky teams had somehow conspired to play the longest recorded map so far. Coming in at, you're not even gonna believe this, 58 rounds. Sadly, because it was a casual game, we have no idea who these people were or whether they're even still functioning as humans. But shout out to Valorant's most dedicated players, you're on another level. Whether Riot's stats reveal a new champion for 2021, we'll just have to wait and see. But next time you think to yourself, just one more game, make sure you understand 
exactly what you might be signing up for. Oh, God, really? Again?